Hey, welcome back to Good Guardian Canine Working Dog. Before we get into this video, I'd just like to take a few minutes to say thank you so much to the poor Italian farmers in the rural areas of Italy that took the time to put the combinations of dogs together to meet the needs on their farms. And they created an incredible dog. They created a monumental pillar that's now a part of Italy's history and a part of Italian culture. It's a great portion of Italian heritage, the Italian Cane Corso. So I really want to take the time to voice that and to make it clear that I'm specifically thanking the poor Italian farmers in the rural areas that created this breed of dog. Very important to make that statement and make sure it's clear that it's the poor farmers of Italy that created the Italian Cane Corso, not the elites of the day, the poor people. The pictures I'm sharing with you now are pictures of present Cane Corsos, traditional Cane Corsos that were bred by breeders that I know personally that only breeds traditional Cane Corsos. And these are not mainstream breeders and they would prefer to remain that way. Uh, they breed traditional Cane Corsos, traditional Cane Corsos that were bred down or are descendants from the original dogs that were created and bred and kept and worked on the farms by the poor Italian farmers who created the breed. Some of the pictures are of dogs that are descendants of the first generation of traditional Cane Corsos that were brought to the United States. And so I'm sharing with you now a few pictures of these. I do want to say that these dogs may vary in type, but not in kind. They may vary in type, but not in kind. In terms of kind, they're the same kind of dog. They're traditional Cane Corsos, they're pure dogs. In terms of type, they may vary. It may be the more athletic, elongated type that are used for hog hunting, hog catching, uh, working on a farm. Uh, these dogs are bred for performance. They were not bred for a confirmation show, so they're more athletic type dogs. And then there are the more substantial, uh, a, a bit thicker, bulkier dogs that are kept maybe in the city for a personal bodyguard or living in an apartment, living in an apartment or something like that. And so you'll see various types, but in terms of kind, they're the same kind. There's only one kind, and that's the Italian Cane Corso. Beyond that, I'll share a few slides from Italy which were taken by a personal friend of mine. And after that, I'll get into sharing some information on the Italian Cane Corso. Only one is real. In order to have a very good understanding of the Cane Corso's temperament and its, uh, its character, its characteristics, how it behaves, and uh, structurally, how it, how it looks, its functionality and its mobility, and to understand um, the development of the Cane Corso, it's important for you to understand a bit of Italian history. It will give you a much more rounded understanding of what types what type of what kind of a dog you're deal with, dealing with, and what type, what types were created within the Cane Corso breed itself? The Cane Corso is synonymous with the Italian people. The dog is synonymous with their culture, and the dog is synonymous with farm life in Italy, especially on the mainland. Very important to understand that. So, if you're not understanding or studying Italian history, you're selling yourself short if you're trying to really understand the origins of the Cane Corso and its uh, temperament and characteristics of the dog and its traits because the people 
needed a type of dog or needed a kind of dog that would be able to accomplish many different tasks. And they needed these tasks to be met in the one dog. They needed these abilities to be in one dog. They needed a multi-purpose utility type dog, right? The dog is synonymous with farm life. So they needed that type of a dog and they were poor people. So they can't afford one dog to do this, to drive sheep and one dog to do this and, and another dog for that. So they created a dog that could do it all. It's a utility farm dog. It's a working breed. And so in order to understand the Connie Corso's traits, its characteristics, it's how the, how the dog functions, you really need to understand the demands and the needs of the people. You need to understand the Italian culture. You can't negate that. You have to respect the people's culture and understand that. You can't impose the attributes of your own culture on an Italian dog doesn't work that way not if you really want to understand and if you truly love Connie Corso